What's up, God's people? Welcome back to Word Therapy. As always, it's a blessing to connect with the crew on this another Tuesday night or whenever you're watching. I pray that you had an exceptional day or that your day is starting off exceptionally, whatever the case may be. If you joined us last week, you know that we started a series called Gold Minds. We're dealing with the mind and more importantly, trying to adopt the gold standard of all minds, and that is the mind of Jesus Christ. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 4 and 23, it says, be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. That's, that's a major word. Don't miss that. That your whole life, it is formed by your thoughts. And that's why you have to be selective on what you think. You have to be selective on your thoughts because what people don't realize is that your thoughts are shaping your life. The reason why you feel the way you feel is because of the way you think. Your emotions are controlled by your thoughts. And so if you want to feel better, think better. If you want things to be different in your life, think different. Today, we're going to talk about something that can affect your mind in a tremendous way. It's something called strongholds. So if you're watching this, I want you to get your pens and notebooks, your phones, tablets, whatever works for you, get those out because we're gonna unpack some information tonight that I believe is truly going to be helpful, but also a blessing to your life. Don't forget as we get ready for this teaching tonight, to like, subscribe, and share. By doing that, you help me to reach others who may be in your circle of influence who may need these principles that we're gonna to share tonight. So let's do that. I very much appreciate your help in being a digital evangelist and a mobile missionary. Now, before we begin, would you pray with me? God, we thank you for yet another opportunity you granted us to gather together as your crew, the Christ crew, the word therapy crew, to learn from you, God, to be edified, to be enlightened, to be educated, to be enriched so that we might live the quality of life, the abundant life that you call for us to live. God, we want to be whole. We want to be healthy. We want to be healed. And so we declare right now in the name of Jesus that that which shall go forth will be for the healing of many lives. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. So I want to start tonight with a verse out of 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse number 3. Let me show you this. It says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So right off the bat, this lets us know that we are in a war. And that war is called, for those of us who are Christians, it is called spiritual warfare. And basically what is happening, Satan and evil forces are trying to control your mind. And then you have the Spirit of God who is trying to get you to submit your mind to the will of God. And so you are caught in the middle. There is a tug of war, so to speak. There is a war that is going on and the battlefield is in the mind. Are you hearing me? The battle takes place in the mind. That's why the Bible talks about putting on the helmet of salvation. That's why uh, you'll read in the Bible, it talks about guarding your heart. It talks about guarding your eyes because one of the ways that the enemy tries to get us to submit to the flesh is through the senses. He appeals to your senses, what you see, what you hear, what you feel, what you touch. Those are the things he uses in order to get you to start thinking crazy thoughts. And so there's a battle that is going on, y'all. The devil knows that whoever controls the mind controls the body. Your mind is the gold mine. And I pray and hope that this teaching will help you to be victorious in your mind. So let's keep reading. Verse number four in that same passage, it says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, 
but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. There's that word, strongholds. So, so when Satan starts attacking you, he starts in the mind. What he wants to build in the mind is a stronghold. Now, I need you to pay attention. I need you to really focus in because I'm about to give you some important information. The word stronghold literally describes a fortress, castle, or prison. You know, when we were in Ghana last year, we visited the castle at Elmina and Cape Coast where those who were enslaved, our, those Africans who were held before they were sent across the Middle Passage uh, into slavery, it, it was a stronghold that they were imprisoned in. But in a spiritual sense, when we're looking at a fortress, when we're looking at a castle, and, and when we're looking at prisons, they are all metaphors for spiritual strongholds. We'll talk about that in a minute. Now, in the Old Testament, a fortress or a castle uh, was usually constructed with big, thick, impenetrable walls that were made out of brick and out of clay. And the walls were usually so big and wide that it was impossible for somebody to get through the wall, for somebody to get around the wall, even for somebody to scale the wall. That's the metaphor of a stronghold that somebody struggled to break in because of a thick or high wall. Now, in the New Testament, it gives the picture of a prison. Now, if a fortress is designed to keep folk from getting in, a prison is designed to keep people from getting out. When you think about prison, you think about chains, you think about captivity, you think about bars, you think about cells. So let me recap it. The word stronghold is a metaphor for a, a fortress, something you can't break into. The walls are too high and too thick. But it's also a picture of a prison where you are detained and can't get out. Let me know in the chat if, you see, if this is making sense. So what does that mean for us in the 21st century? Here, here's the thesis. A stronghold is a deception. It is a lie that is so entrenched in your mind that you believe it to be true. It is a lie that you have heard for so long until you believe it to be a true fact of reality. You've, you've heard it so long it, it, and it can be passed down from generation to generation and you think it is normal, but it is a lie. And, and it is that lie that is hindering you from moving forward. So for instance, some of you have a lie that you've been told that you believe is true. And it's like a castle. It's like a fortress, meaning nobody can break in and give you a liberating perspective because you're like, hey, this is who I am and this is what I believe. And I, I don't care what you have to say. So when people try to break through your walls and give you information to break the chains, you don't believe it because for so long, this has been my thought process. This is how I feel about it. You can't tell me anything. Does that make sense? Or it is a prison. The lie, the deception is a prison and it is keeping you from moving forward in life. It is detaining you. It is imprisoning you. It is keeping you from moving forward. Now, Satan is well acquainted with lies. Lies are the tools of the enemy. In fact, it says in John chapter 8, let me show you this. John chapter 8, verse 44, it says, You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. That's why you always hear that saying, the devil is a liar because that's what he is. He is a liar. He is the father of lies. His language and dialect 
is Lyonese. And it is these lies that hinder us and keep us from moving forward. So let me ask you a question. What lie has been told to you when you have been trained to only go to a certain point? Or all you can do is go to uh, or go a certain distance. God says the gate of opportunity is open, but you won't even try to walk through it because you've been trained to be mediocre. You've been trained to mooch off of others. You've been trained for poverty. You've been trained that this is the best that life has to offer. Nobody else in the family went to college. So what makes you think you're going to college? That's what the lie tells you. But I stopped by to tell you, it is a lie. There's a God-given assignment that God's got your name on it. God has not only called you to stay, God has not called you rather to stay at the level you're at. Here's what the Bible says. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what God has in store for you. And many of us, we just go to a certain point, not realizing it's in the mind. It's the lies that are so entrenched in our minds. And for some of us, the lie is like a castle. People can't tell you anything because the lie is so good. This is who I am. This is how it works. My question for you is this. What's your lie? What is the lie? that is keeping you from moving forward. Is it, I can't change? You know, sometimes the enemy will speak that to you. He'll tell you that you can't change. You've got this addiction, whatever it is. Could it be a substance addiction, alcohol, illicit drugs, weed, could be sex, whatever it is. You just can't get the monkey off of your back. Can't get over it. And the lie is, that you, that you have begun to believe is that you can't function without it. You get up in the morning and you need a hit. You need it throughout the day. Can't go to sleep without it. Another lie the enemy will tell you is that God can't use me. Some of us feel like God can't use us because we don't have enough talent. We're not strong enough. And as a result, we limit the activity of God in our lives. Another lie is that my money brings about security. That's a lie. Because God will put you in a situation where your money can't bail you out. Matter of fact, if money becomes your God, God will put you in a situation where he'll say, okay, let your God, let your money fix the situation. And the lies go on and on and on. But what is critical for you is that you have to identify what's your lie. What is the thing that's stopping you from moving forward? Because you have to identify the lie if you're going to overcome the lie. Now, here it is. Let's look at Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21, verse number 22. One who is wise can go up against the city of the mighty and pull down the stronghold in which they trust. Somebody drop this in the chat and say, pull it down. Once you identify your lie, you cannot be passive. You have to attack the lie. Once you identify, this is my issue, this is my struggle, this is my problem. You cannot just sit on the sideline thinking it's just going to go away. Doesn't work like that. The devil, here's what the Bible says. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. You have to identify your lie, and then you have to attack it. You have to fight it. I'll never forget this story about a young lady who's about 100 pounds soaking wet. And she was married to this guy, six foot six, 250 pounds, and he was abusive toward the young lady. He beat on her and wounded her physically and emotionally dogged her out. And she had all of these bruises and she would try to use makeup to cover up the bruises, but everybody knew what was going on with her. 
people would tell her, why don't you just leave? Why don't you just get up out of that particular relationship? And she would tell them, I'm just praying. Yeah, you know, I'm just I'm just praying. I'm just praying to hear from the Lord because you know that that's what a lot of folk have been taught by those who are super spiritual. Just just pray your way through it. And so she's praying and praying and praying. But what she didn't understand is that God was already speaking. God was already answering. God doesn't just speak audibly through prayer. God speaks through realization and revelation. He's beating on you. That's your message. That's your message that it's time to leave. You heard from him. You heard from God. So she went through that a long time, but later on in her life, she got out of that particular relationship. And the reason why she got out of the relationship is because her mind changed. See, when your mind gets renewed, when your mind gets transformed and you start understanding and believing that God has given you power and authority to tread on the heads of serpents at that particular moment, you begin to fight back. Are y'all with me tonight? You got to learn how to fight back. You got to learn how to attack. And today, I want to encourage you all, fight back. That's what I want us to do. Fight back. Encourage your neighbor in the chat with that. Just say fight back. Quit letting the devil push you around. Matter of fact, the devil keeps pushing us because we haven't told him to stop. The devil keeps pushing some of us because you have not opened your mouth and said, uh, enough is enough. You're going to stop pushing my children. You're going to stop pushing my marriage. You're going to stop messing with my money. You're going to leave my church alone. You're going to get up out of my house. You didn't pay for Wi-Fi. You didn't pay for cable. You didn't buy my dog kibbles and bits. Are y'all hearing me in the chat? At some point, you have to get to the place. When you begin to walk in authority and fight, you have to get to the point where when the devil starts attacking, you respond, let's get ready to rumble. You have to fight. You've got to attack. You have to go up and pull those strongholds down and decree and declare by faith, I shall overcome this. You got it? So you got to do that. And, and identifying your lie is a process. You have to get in the space with a counselor or an accountability group where you can have a dialogue and you, you talk about it, where you can talk about the lies that are entrenched in your mind. Talk about the perspectives that you have that are not true. And once you identify your lie, and once you're ready to attack, let me let me show you something. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse number four, it says the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. My weapons are not of this world. Another translation says that our weapons are not carnal, meaning it is not flesh. It's spiritual. This is a spiritual fight. So then I cannot use flesh weapons. Now, now, who is it that's talking here in 2 Corinthians? Paul. And let me give you his resume. He spoke 14 languages. He mastered seven of them. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. He was circumcised on the eighth day. He is responsible for writing half of the New Testament. He had notoriety. He was prolific. He could talk. He had style. The brother had it going on. But with all of that education, he couldn't do anything with the devil. All of that is flesh. That does not intimidate the devil. It's not going to cause him to run away. What happens to a lot of us and a lot of times we try to fight the devil with education. 
We try to fight the devil with our smarts, with our knowledge. And I'm not saying education is not good. I'm not saying education is not important. I have three degrees to prove that I believe in education. But what I'm saying is that you have to attack spiritual things with spiritual responses. Are y'all getting this? Let me do it like this. It's, it's like somebody has cancer and you give them lotion to treat it. It's like if somebody has uh, a brain tumor and you give them Excedrin Plus. That's not going to be effective. You have to meet the enemy where he is. You have to use spiritual weapons. You remember over in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, 2 Chronicles chapter 20, when Jehoshaphat, who was the northern king, was being attacked by the, the Midianites, the Ammonites, the the termites, the shylites, all of them, all the ites. And remember, the Bible says he went to the house of God and he asked the people to seek the Lord with him and to inquire. That means to pray. And then he asked the people to fast. And while they were fasting, the spirit of God fell on Jehaziel. Jehaziel was the priest and the priest got a word from God to get the choir and, and put the choir in front and y'all are going to praise and you're going to experience victory. Notice they did three things to fight. They prayed, they fasted, and they praised because here it is. Every spiritual battle demands a spiritual response. When Jesus was led up into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, the Bible says that when the devil showed up and said, turn these stones into bread, Jesus' response to him came from Deuteronomy 8 and 3. He says, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And then the devil came back two more times. And what did Jesus do? Jesus said again, it is written. It is written. It is written. Are y'all following me? Jesus comes to the end of his life. And he's, he's in the garden of Gethsemane. And the Bible says he didn't pray one time. He didn't pray two times. He prayed three times. God did not remove the cup. He asked, Father, can you remove this cup from me? But God did not remove that cup. But God gave him strength for the cup. Oh, y'all got to get this. What I'm trying to get you to see is that if you're going to handle demonic attacks, you're going to have to go spiritual. I know you're smart. I know you know people. I know you're connected. I know you've been in school. I know you have this and you have that. But to get the devil off of you, you're going to have to pray. You're going to have to fast. The Bible says it was midnight when Paul and Silas were in prison, a stronghold. That's what a prison is. It's a stronghold. And what did they do? They prayed and they praised because there is something mighty about the weapons of God. And you got to begin to employ prayer and fasting and meditation. You got to understand that to address the problem, you have to deal with the source of the problem. If you address the source, the symptoms are going to go away. When you see somebody with a runny nose, you can use as much Kleenex as you want. But if you don't address the virus, the nose is going to continue to run. And when you start dealing with the root of the issue, the fruit will go away. Oh, Y'all got to get that. I'm trying to help you. You better learn how to pray. You better learn how to fast. You better learn how to spend some time in the word because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. And the reason why you keep bleeding is because you keep putting band-aids on your situation and you have not addressed the situation that you're in by placing a band-aid on it. Am I talking to anybody in the chat? that knows that when you put on the whole armor of God, you will be able to handle your situation and you'll get the victory. So you got to fight right. <laughs> That's good. 
You got to fight right. Now, if Satan is the father of lies, what does that make God? Let's go to John 8 and 32. He says in that 32nd verse, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. What's going to set you free? Not church, not being in ministry. That's good, but that's not going to set you free. The devil goes to church every week. Matter of fact, he's a hitchhiker. Some of y'all take him with you to church every Sunday. Church does not set you free. It helps, but what sets you free is truth. Not just truth, but knowing the truth, abiding in the truth, spending time with the truth, understanding the truth. One of the weapons that God has given to you is understanding. That understanding is a weapon against ignorance. If you don't know something, the devil can always bamboozle you. One of the greatest weapons you can have is to understand who you are in God and what you can do because he is on your side. Come on, crew, help me teach this. Tell somebody, you better get understanding. You better get some knowledge. What does the Bible say? The Bible says we perish because of a lack of knowledge. Some people don't even realize that your greatest weapon is what you know. The Bible says that truth will set you free. Now, here's the challenge. You ready? The debate is what is truth? The debate in our culture, the debate in America is, is that truth is subjective. Truth is situational. Truth is whatever you think is true. But for those of us who are believers in Christ, the truth is the revelation of God in his word. And we get an understanding of the truth as we study the word and as the truth in the word is revealed to us by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Look at 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Look what happens when we use the weapon of truth. It says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Now, now notice it never said that we bring the devil into captivity. He said every thought. Here's the translation. Arrest the lie. Whatever lie that's stopping you from going forward, I've got to arrest the lie. That's why you have to identify your lie and you've got to walk confidently in the authority that God has given to you to arrest the lie. You have to come uh, up to the lie and say, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. And when a lie tries to resist, sometimes you have to call for backup. Sometimes you need a prayer partner to show up. Girl, I'm having a rough day. It's something I can't shake. It's something I am. Am I talking to anybody in the chat that knows sometimes if I call my prayer partner who I know can get a prayer through, we can arrest this thing together. And then you have to take the lie to prison. Take the lie that you can't be and that you can't have. Take it to prison. And when you take it to prison, here it is, no visitation. See, that's our problem. The reason why some of us continue to deal with the stronghold is because you keep going to visit the lie. But you and I have to adopt a no visitation policy. I'm not going to be your pen pal. I'm not going to reminisce. I'm not going uh, on the, to the social media page. I'm not going to be laying in the bed thinking about you. Somebody drop it in the chat in all caps like you're standing on business. Say no visitation. Quit visiting the lie. Resist the lie because the truth will set you free. Listen, I have been praying all week long that God would give me a word that it would intersect with your faith and decision-making that would cause you to be delivered 
and set free. If you believe this truth, it will set you free. It will give you joy like nothing else can. You got to let the lie go. If God delivered you out of something that could have destroyed you, but yet you made it out of it, why in the world would you go back into the same thing that could have destroyed you, that could have ruined your life? Somebody, you have a testimony because you made it out. You smell like smoke, but you didn't get burned. You, you, you should have died financially. You should have died relationally. You should have died from the bad business deal, but you still have a pulse. You're still alive because God brought you out. Go on and drop some praise in the chat and thank God for bringing you out. Believe the truth. Because here's the thing, when you know the truth, when you believe the truth, you can reject the lies. Listen, I can't stop birds from flying over my head, but I can stop them from landing in my head. And you have to get to the place that when you know the truth, you're not about to land up in here. You can fly over my head, you can be on my job. You can even be in the church house, but you're not about to get in my head. You have to get to the place where you reject the lies. When you know the truth. See, see, we always focus on verse 32 of John chapter 8. But the power, the real power is in verse 31. It says, if you continue in my word, that's powerful. If you abide in him, if you continue in the word, you will know the truth. Some of us don't know the truth because you're not abiding in him. The greatest faith is not learned, it's discovered. And when you spend time walking with God, you discover who he is. Did, did you hear what I just said? When you spend time walking with God, you discover who he is. That's why I don't need anyone to tell me that God's a way maker. I know because I discovered it for myself. I don't need a classroom to tell me God is a healer. I know God is a healer because I discovered it for myself. I don't need anyone to tell me he is a friend. I discovered that for myself. So when the enemy tells me a lie, I can reject that because I know the truth. When the enemy comes and says, this is the best that life has to offer, that's nothing but a lie. Because my God already told me that there is an Abrahamic blessing that is on my life. That I'm going to be so blessed that people will be blessed for blessing me. And whoever curses me will be cursed for trying to curse me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. God has already spoken over my life that I'm going to make your name great. So when the devil comes to say what you've done to this point is as good as it's going to get for you, you can reject that because you know the truth. When the devil comes and tells you that God won't use you because of a mistake, you already know that's a lie because everybody that God used made several mistakes. If you confess your faults unto the Lord, he is faithful and just to forgive you, not some of your sins, but all of your sins. When the devil tells you that God isn't going to be able to pay your bills, the devil is a liar. He's going to supply not some of my needs, but all of my needs. And then he'll make a hater pay for them. <laughs> you you got to use the truth and reject the lie. What God has for me, it is for me. So I'm not going to walk around with low self-esteem. I'm not arrogant. I'm confident. I believe God loves me. So when the devil starts playing mind games with you, you got to reject that lie. And fight and fight and fight and fight 
get your mind right and fight. Here, here it is. Pull out the sledgehammer and say, this wall is going to fall. Come on, come on. Let me see your hammers in the chat. Come on. If you're, if you're sick and tired of being in prison, if you are sick and tired of being in captivity, drop that sledgehammer in the chat and say in the name of Jesus, this wall is going to fall. This generational curse is going to fall. This financial imprisonment is going to fall. This poor perspective is going to fall. Declare the word over it. And eventually you're going to see a chip. You're going to then you're going to see a crack. And then one brick will fall and another and another and another. Get the sledgehammer of the word of God. Start speaking the word over it. Start praying over it. And don't stop until you get free. Don't stop until you get delivered. Let's stop right there. Let me pray for you. God, in the name of Jesus, we pray now, God, for a renewed mind. God, there are some strongholds, some castles, some prisons, some fortresses, God. For some of us, we can't get out. For others, we, we can't get into what you want us to get into. But God, in the name of Jesus, we believe that through the power of prayer and through your power operative in our lives, that those strongholds can be pulled down. God, for that person, God, who's thinking negatively, for that person who thinks that they can't do because of the lie, that's been told to them. God, we rebuke that lie in the name of Jesus and we declare your truth because we know that your truth will set us free. So God, let your truth reign supreme in our lives. Allow us, oh God, the strength to walk in the truth even when the lie seems attractive. Even when the lie is something that has guided our lives to this point, God, we reject it, we rebuke it, we release it right now in the name of Jesus because, God, we know that you have more for us when we walk in your truth. And so, God, we thank you for your word. Thank you, God, for showing us your way. And now, God, place us at the center of your will. We love you and we give your name, praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Listen, I'm talking to somebody right now. There's a stronghold that's got you bound up. Got you tripping, mind all messed up. What is the issue? The lie that you have yet to deal with. If you don't get your mind right, if you don't get your thoughts together, nothing else is going to come together. You're going to have to detox from stuff so that you can get clear. Some of us have some castles with thick walls around our minds and nobody can tell you anything. Listen, everything that comes at you might not be good, but there's some things you are ignoring that God is sending through other people that are designed to set you free. Look, we all have issues and once you identify the issue, you have to attack it because the longer you tolerate the lie, the stronger it becomes. That's why it's called a stronghold. It presents a strong hold. And that's why you have to keep hitting it. You got to keep hitting that wall with that sledgehammer. And one day you get to the point where it won't even bother you anymore because it will no longer be there. Listen, I'm done teaching, but now is an opportunity to put the principles of this lesson into practice. One stronghold that exists in our lives is how we think about giving, We've, how we think about generosity. We've had things passed on to us that are really lies. We hear people say things like tithing isn't in the Bible or it's, in, it's not in the New Testament, that's Old Testament. No, it's in the whole thing. That's a lie. Giving never left the Bible just because we went from Old Testament to New Testament. The spirit of tithing is all throughout the Bible. So let's tear down that stronghold tonight 
let's give for some of you this is the place where you have found connection uh, and you give as a part of your spiritual discipline to this ministry and I thank you for that I am so grateful for that you are literally helping us to transform lives some of you know you need to get back on track with your giving you can do that right now because Satan knows that if you ever unlock the power of giving if you ever unlock the power of gratitude he's not going to be able to do a thing with you so let's give now and and whenever you may be watching this you can give at any time the lower third is on the screen we've made it easy for you to give and I thank you for it in advance God bless you my friends I pray that this lesson was helpful tonight until next Tuesday I love you in the Lord love you to life we'll see you next time